Hi, my name is Mario Manneville, and I'm the pastor teacher at Reformed Faith Mission Community Church here in Belva South in the Western Cape of South Africa. I serve alongside my brother and fellow elder Quentin Manneville in this beautiful part of the world that you will probably know as Cape Town. Cape Town is a beautiful city. I know many tourists come here and maybe some of you have visited our beautiful city. Our city is rich in its diversity of colorful people from all walks of life and cultures. We boast with beautiful garden routes, with estates, wine estates, beach fronts, and the famous Table Mountain. When you drive through our city uh, of Cape Town, however, you would probably not see our little town, Balboa South, which formed part of what is called the Cape Flats. Historically, the Cape Flats used to be known as the Apartheid Dumping Ground. It's the area that the Apartheid government designated as non-white. The so-called blacks and colored people were forcefully removed from central urban areas to live in government-built townships and schemes in the Cape Flats. And almost all the communities of the Cape Flats remain to this day, to one degree or another, poverty-stricken with serious social problems that includes a high rate of unemployment and disturbing levels of gang violence, drug abuse, prostitution. Well, this is what I call home. It's where I grew up. And this is where we as a church seek to serve and to make Jesus Christ known. Apart from the gang violence and drug abuse in our community, we live in a scheme that is almost void of the true gospel. Our community is very religious. Everybody professes to be a Christian, just not the biblical definition of a Christian. They do not know the God of the Bible or the Jesus of Scripture. Uh, they do not have a, a true gospel. They have a, a false gospel. And many so-called Pentecostal churches has either adopted a prosperity gospel, health, wealth, and uh, um, prosperity, um, or some form of universalism, which teaches uh, basically that everybody's going to go to heaven and that there is no hell. And gangsters and prostitutes are told that they will go to heaven as long as they believe in Jesus, go to church, pay their dues, because God understands where they live, He understands the environment, He understands how hard life is, He understands why they must do the things that they do, and He's willing to forgive, so it's His job to forgive us, it's our job to survive in this dog-eat-dog -dog society that we are living in. Balboa South is an area where there's no fear of God. People die almost on a weekly basis in our town. We are of gang shootings almost every weekend. Uh, people are being shot in the face right in the middle of the street in broad daylight. So this is the society that we are living in. If I walk through the, through the streets of Balboa South now, I'm probably going to see some domestic violence. Uh, kids are used to it. This is where they grow up. If I just walk and look to the corner of, of our street corner, they, they, we, they will be sitting a, a, a hitman. Ex-gangster used to be a hitman. We see drug dealers uh, um, on the street corners, prostitutes walking by our house daily. As far as I know, Reform Faith Mission Community Church is the only active re reform witness in a community where everybody do what is right in their own eyes. We are a small church with people who love the Lord. They love each other and they have a zeal for the glory of God. We have the saying that we want to see the glory of God in the salvation of sinners. And we are committed to share the gospel to everyone. We are a community of believers who are committed to the gospel message. Uh, yes, there are social welfare um, initiatives which are nice, but they cannot save anybody. It's only the gospel that will save sinners. And so we are committed to evangelism. We are committed to work hard at fostering a gospel culture in our church. Throughout the five years, we have seen the Lord change the lives of hardcore gangsters and drug dealers and, uh, and, and drug addicts. Uh, we, we, the Lord has even graced us with the opportunity to, to, to minister and disciple a woman who sold her daughters into prostitution. 
the Lord saved this woman and the whole operation stopped. She used to sell drugs from her house and use her kids as drug mules. The Lord has saved her. And just three months after her salvation, she died. What an amazing testimony of the richness of God's love and His overflowing mercy for people such as us. What about the couple in our church who both were drug addicts? They lost all seven of their kids to social welfare because of their drug addiction, because they used the grants that they would get from their children, uh, from government for their children, to support their drug habit. The husband used to beat up old, uh, old pensioners for their pension money, just to support his drug addiction. And the Lord has saved both of them. Both of them are growing in the Lord, they're in our church, and they're just a beautiful testimony of the grace of God. A beautiful testimony of God's grace in a community that has written them off. We have many such stories of God's amazing grace. In our church, we have murderers, people that used to, that used to, who used to be gang leaders, in and out of prison, and the Lord has just changed them and turned their lives around and cleaned them up, humbled them, and they serve alongside us to spread this gospel in our community. It's such a beautiful testament to the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. As a small church in a poor community, we need your constant prayer. Uh, we are meeting with gangs on a weekly basis, teaching them the Bible and sharing the gospel news of Jesus Christ with them, the good news of Christ, that they don't have to die in their sins, and that if they repent of their sins and put their trust in Him, that He will save them. We warn them of the terror of God, the wrath of God. We warn them to flee the wrath to come. And this is a dangerous ministry. But it's a fulfilling ministry. It's a needed ministry in our community. And the people that we serve in our community, they need to hear the gospel. Please continue watching further as our ministry friends encourage you in how you can be a blessing to our church. I would also encourage you to send, to come to our church, to send people to our church. Come on a short-term mission trip, maybe for a few days. Come live with us. Come do street evangelism with us, door-to-door -door evangelism, open air preaching with us, and come experience firsthand what God is doing in our community. Thank you for watching. Please continue to watch further. The Lord bless you. Hello to all my friends at Reformed Faith Mission Community Church. Reform Faith Mission Community Church. The Reform Faith Mission Community Church. I wanted to say hello. My name is Chad Washer. And Reformed Faith Mission Community Church. Hello, Reformed Faith Mission Community Church. So church planting in South Africa has been a major focus for HeartCry this past year. If you've been on the Africa blog lately, you've probably seen quite a bit about Quentin and Mario Manaville in the Cape Town area. Their church has been meeting in a school classroom for years, and now they may have an incredible opportunity to purchase an existing church building right there in their community. The church has been praying about this for years. A building would give them greater visibility and would also communicate permanence to the folks there in Belleville South. Please pray that God would do the impossible and provide for this building. I just wanted to take this time to say hello to you, to encourage you in the work that you are doing, and to let you know uh, how much it blesses me to know that there are people out there like you who are keeping the faith, who are plugging away, doing the things that we need to do to reach people with the gospel, even when the costs are high. Your work will not go unnoticed, and you will reap a reward if you faint not. God bless you.